So for this problem, we want to, we're asked to find the volume of a solid that lies below a surface and above the xy plane. Remember, z equals zero is just the xy plane. Okay? And remember that if we call this solid that's bounded by this surface, if we call this solid E, then the volume of E is just the double integral uh, over the domain region in the plane of the function f of x, y, and then integrated with respect to area, where this function, this is the key, this function is the function that gives us the surface. So for this problem, the function is 1 minus x squared minus y squared. So this is the integrand. This is what we want to integrate on this example. One outstanding question here is still, what the heck is d, right? So let's first think about what this function looks like, what the graph of the function looks like, and then maybe we can figure out what the domain d is. And we could do this analytically, but let's try to get a picture of this first. So here's our x, y, z coordinates. And we re hopefully remember uh, from previous lectures that this shape, z equals 1 minus x squared minus y squared, is a paraboloid. It's an elliptical paraboloid because both of these have the same sign, minus, minus, and it opens downward. So the minuses tell us it opens downward. And uh, sitting above the origin, when x and y are both 0, this paraboloid intersects the z-axis at a height of 1. So let's say this is 1. It's going to intersect at this height, and then it's going to open downward in both directions. And it, technically the graph keeps going below the xy plane, but we know that based on the statement of our question, um, this graph is going to intersect the xy plane, and that's going to help us determine our domain. So this intersects, let's just draw it like this, intersects in what looks supposed to look like a circle, but how can we determine exactly what this bluish shape here is? So this is our domain. This is what we need to find out before we can even try to compute this integral. And of course, this domain d is the intersection of the function we've been talking about with the xy plane, whose, co whose equation is z equals zero. So what we do is we just set these equal to each other to find out the equation for this thing in the plane. And of course, once we've got this equation written down, we can rearrange and solve this, put it in a form that we're more uh, familiar with. So x squared plus y squared equals one. And actually, what I wrote down, these equal signs not quite right. That's just the boundary of the circle. If we want the interior as well, then we need to have, uh, whoops, I went the wrong way. It's got to be inside of this, right? So the interior of the circle. I had it right the first time. Okay, yeah. We want the portion that's above, above the plane. So 1 minus x squared minus y squared should be larger than 0. That means it's above the xy plane. Okay, and so this is our region. So let's pull this region out and just look at this now. And again, um, we're in the section, I'll change the color here, but we're in the section on polar coordinates. So you might just guess that you want to use polar coordinates on this one, but actually um, this should scream polar coordinates to you, especially once you do a few of these, because how do you build a circle? Well, one way is you can bound it between the upper and the lower halves of the circle. If you want to do it as a function in the xy plane, you have to have two of these, right? You have to have both. Um, that's a lot of work. The other way to do it is to first build out, so let me change the color, first build out the radius. So in this case, our radius will go from zero out to one. This is the unit circle. And then take this little segment of the radius and just zip it around the circle. And that's telling us then that theta should go from zero all the way around to two pi. Okay, so these are we're going to write our polar integral. It's going to have these boundaries in the r and the theta directions. And then we also need to transform this function, right? But remember, this equation x squared plus y squared is actually equal to r squared, right, in polar coordinates. So our function only depends on r. There's not going to be any thetas involved. And it can just be written as 1 minus r squared. So as I'm cluttering up this page, I'm going to go to the next page to actually compute the integral, but there's one more thing we need to remember, and that's what to do with dA. And hopefully at this point, it's just second nature. For dA, you have to throw in another r. So r, dr, d theta. Okay? So let's remember all this stuff. I'm going to go to the uh, clean page to actually compute this. But our volume integral, so our volume integral, is going to be equal to double integral over d, I'll write it in polar coordinates, f of r theta, r dr 
d theta. It's just a single r there. And then remember, we know exactly what's happening here now, right? So theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. r goes from 0 to 1. Our function is 1 minus r squared after converting. And then we've got our r dr d theta. And so this integral is actually uh, super nice. This one's called separable because there are no thetas inside the integrand. So we can factor out the integral with respect to theta. And this is, again, you can't always do this. This is because there's no thetas inside. And then multiply by the integral with respect to r. So I'm going to multiply through by the extra factor of r. And we just have to compute these two calc 1 integrals and multiply them together, multiply the answers together. So this one's uh, a stare at it problem. That's just 2 pi. And then this one, we get antiderivative is 1 half uh, r squared minus 1 fourth r to the fourth. And our boundaries for r are 0 to 1. And so just a little computation here tells us that we have our final answer is 2 pi times 1 half minus a quarter. That's just another quarter, right? So this is ends up being just pi over 2. And so that's the volume bounded underneath that paraboloid that opens downward, um, but sitting above the xy plane.